Hi everyone, I'm Charlie White and today I'm going to show you how I've made a little mod to fit on top of my two Stanley sawhorses to make the perfect outdoor workbench. So these are the two sawhorses here. I've had them for a year or so now. I use them in the day job, sometimes take them on site, put big sheets of MDF on them. Um, I've been doing a lot of um, routing and cutting on them. They're a great little product. So easy to fold up. They're light as a feather. And when you need to set them up, you just quickly do that. But I thought to myself recently, there's gotta be a way to make a nice little workbench for these sawhorses. So, as I often do, I started doing a bit of research and thinking over how to create a workbench for these sawhorses. I have to say, I found a very similar idea to the one I'd come up with on YouTube. So I'm gonna include a link to that in the description at the end of this video, because I don't want to take all the credit for something that's already been done. But anyway, let's take a look at how I've created this workbench. So the general idea is to use these grooves that are cut into the top of the sawhorse here. These grooves will accommodate two 2.4 meter lengths of four by two timber. Now this timber I've got here is what's called CLS timber. I think this stuff originated in Canada and it's generally used for internal walls and stud partitions, things like that. It's not the sort of premium quality plain timber you get, but it has been plain to an extent. Um, I think the idea of this is it's smooth so it doesn't give you splinters whilst you're sort of working on it and putting out stud work and things like that. And the reason I'm using it today is it comes out a little bit narrower than your typical uh, four by two. That's like one and a half inches or just under four centimeters 38 39 mil and the the fore part of that here is only three and a half inches or just under 90 mil the beauty of this is that it fits very neatly into these grooves and that was something that was pointed out in sa borg's video that i just referred to on youtube which means i won't have to do any work to it if I'd gone for a sort of straightforward tantalised 4x2 or something like that, because it finishes a little bit wider, I would have struggled to get that into the grooves. Next step, I've got to cut out a notch in this so that I can let this timber in and leave it beautifully flush with the workbench. What's going to be so brilliant about doing that is that at the moment, when I sort of clamp a couple of bits of wood on here to do a bit of routing or planing or something, the sawhorses do rock around a little bit and you have to end up having to put your foot on them or something so it's a bit unstable but if I cut this piece of 4x2 at an angle in that that will stop it from moving it'll become a very sturdy workbench so first off I've got to notch this shape into my piece of timber to do that I'm going to create a template using this piece of cardboard first off I've got the rebate down from the top so I'm using my adjustable square to work that out and now I can mark that off on the template like that. Measuring the width of the cutout we're looking at 41 mil that's there and now using my sliding bevel these are a great little tool to have in your toolkit because they allow you to mirror any angle that you're trying to measure, mark, scribe, template, whatever. So, as you can see here, it's offering the bevel up to the edge of the sawhorse, set the angle and then tighten the bevel. Now what I've got to do is reflect that angle on each side of my template. Like that. Now I've just got to cut the template out and cut the bit along the top, which I'm just using a Stanley knife for. Offer that up to the workbench, and that's looking pretty good. For no particular reason, I've decided to position the sawhorses 500 mil in from the edge of the timbers, lining them both up and marking them off. Now I'm just using the template to mark the hole I need to cut in the timbers I'm going to put a piece of wood underneath to drill into well I've got to cut out these shapes now and so I'm going to drill a couple of holes 
Right, there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could drill a couple more holes and then chisel out the difference, but I'm going to use my jigsaw here. So I get a really straight cut on the sides. I'm going to saw this manually with my Owen saw. Just a sort of generic wood saw. Right, to get it nice and smooth on the other side, I'm just getting my template out again. I've got this great little Stanley fire, which I tend to use a lot on plasterboard, but I'm going to now use that to get a nice straight edge. A little bit of a sand of the edges. This, this CLS is a little bit of a soft wood, so you do have to be a bit careful sawing it. You see it has splintered a little bit. So I've cut this one with my Irwin floorboard saw and you see I've got a much neater cut. A saw with a saw with a smaller blade, you can see the difference between those two. So moment of truth now, let's see if we can slot the timbers into place on the saw horse. So that's it, the timber's in place and already the workbench is completely stable, it's fantastic. So it's on with the worktop. We're getting there. Now, let me just explain to you a little bit about this surface here. Now this is exterior ply, not to be confused with shuttering ply, which is a much rougher surface product. It's 18 mil thick. It's not as good quality as marine ply, but to be honest with you, for what I'm using it for, it's absolutely perfect. It's got a nice flat surface, as you can see. The only thing I do find sometimes with this stuff is that sometimes the laminate on the individual strips of ply that make it up isn't always fantastic. Sometimes it can come away, so you've just got to be a little bit careful with the edges. And you have got to be a little bit careful because if you see here, I've just snagged this bit and the ply is coming away here. I'm going to just glue this back down but it might put you off using exterior ply like I have. You might prefer to use MDF, moisture resistant MDF or something like that. Yeah that'll be fine once I've, once the glue's set. And when I say it's not great quality you will find there are little bits like that where the ply hasn't been glued together properly. But to be honest with you, it's going to be absolutely perfect for this workbench. Now, now the saw horses themselves are just under 700 millimeters wide. I've made this work top 900 millimeters so that I've got a nice big overhang that, I can, overhang that I can clamp things to as I'm routing and all that sort of stuff. It will mean that it's reasonably heavy to cut about. So I was thinking originally making it 800 wide. That could be something that you could consider if you're making one of these. So now all that remains to be do is to mark off the center of each 4x2 piece. Let's grab that along the top so that we can screw the work top down. For this I'm using some decking screws I picked up recently when I was repairing one of my fences. So that's it, the workbench is now complete. I'm really pleased with this because it's so stable. It just doesn't rock at all. And I've no doubt over the coming months you'll see this little contraption featuring quite prominently in my videos. Now, the only thing I would say about this work table at 2.4 meters long, I decided to make it the full length of the sheet. Uh, it is a bit of a beast, it's quite heavy. 
reasonably difficult to um, carry around and fundamentally you've got to find somewhere to keep it so if you're thinking of making one of these workbenches think carefully about where you're going to store it and size your table accordingly uh, as always details of all the tools and materials that i've used in today's video will be in the description at the end of the video if you've got any comments please leave them in the feed below and i'll do my <laughs> i've got my dog coming into this shot if you've got any comments please leave them in the feed below and i'll do oh go away i'll try the video and i'll do my best to get back to you as soon as i can if you've liked this video, please click the like button below. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.